okay, this is the project of the moment for, you know, it, it needs certain, it'll take X number of hours of your day or energies and whatnot. Can you be part of this project and that's it? You know, and with that kind of approach, we were, we were surprisingly, uh, we got a surprisingly good turnout and judiciously organized and, and, and the resu result, we did the unheard of. We actually made money on that parade. It was the first time uh, that parade, that year was the first year that the parade ever made money. It cost us 19800 and we made uh, 20002 There was about a $600 difference. Well, to the good. And that $600, the first use that was made of it was to officially incorporate a new organization, the successor organization, to be the custodian of the parade and the festival. And it was called the Vancouver, and it still is, the Vancouver Pride Society. And I'm one of the founding members of it, as is uh, uh, Gary Penny, and um, all, most, of the, most of the former members of the board of, of, of Pride Community Foundation became a, a part of it. But it was, it was much differently organized than, than the old uh, foundation, and it had a broader appeal, and I, and I think in many ways was more democratic. Each, each organization, as it evolves, um, has made mistakes and learns things. And we wanted to make sure that whatever mistakes the, Vi the Vancouver Pride Society made were of its own. We did not need to repeat mistakes made in the past, but we could always, always take uh, whatever uh, um, positive things came out of our experiences from the past and incorporate them. First thing we incorporated was a limited term for the presidency the leadership of the, or of the organization. It was going to be a three-year term. The second thing we organized and was overlapping uh, directorships so that um, after the first year, everyone was elected to a two-year period or um, so that half, was a, half, the, half the board at each annual general meeting would be elected and the other half would still be in power or still be in place for another year so that we'd have an always overlapping uh, change of people. As I said earlier, the main thing we learned from, from Malcolm Crane is, is that you can't just drop dead and not leave instructions or, or a successor because this is an organization by its very nature that is a successor organization. It's supposed to go on each year. You know, come hell or high water, the parade is on. Whether you're alive or dead, someone is going to do the parade and someone is going to come to the parade. Two other things that uh, had not been done before. A, inviting politicians to make sure that they came to the parade. And this is an idea that was definitely anathema to, to Malcolm, but we began to explore and incorporate the, issue, the idea of a parade marshal because it's a symbolic role, but it's also a time or an opportunity to acknowledge Someone in the in the community who's done an awful lot of work, or or uh, you know, has promoted the community and has in one way made the community in our lives individually and collectively better. Or in some cases, they uh, have been used to recognize other other people from other countries who are struggling for the same mm -hmm. liberties we have and still don't have them Precisely. and are being oppressed. Yeah. Yes, I remember being down the bottom of uh, of Sunset Beach where the parade is, it's a very flat ground. It's a, actually a playing field for soccer or whatever. And there are hills that go up on either side towards uh, the streets. And we were down in the bottom of the flat near the stage where the, where the concert was going to take place. And I remember looking up and the, and the people that were coming down from the parade that was just finishing the parade, it was dispersing the other, uh, the other side of the stage. And the people who had been, parade, who had been watching it follow the parade after the last vehicle or entry and come down the street and then they get to they arrive at at, at um, Sunset Beach and they have to come down the hills over the hill and down into the into the flats where the concert and the booths are and I just saw this wall of people coming over the hill and down down the hill towards where we were and that to me was such an exciting exhilarating moment because 
that first wave of people and uh, come over the over the and there'll be hundreds just coming down the hill and and as time went on of course it filled, the whole bottom filled up that was the most gratifying moment and to me one of the most memorable moments of my entire time on 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 the pride community foundation or on the bank of the pride society now uh, over the years <coughs> a, attendance has grown quite a bit and a lot of that uh, has been probably partially because of the corporate sponsorships, mm -hmm. which have been criticized in the mm -hmm. past. But mm -hmm. my my viewpoint on this is that uh, there are so many people attending now. We know they're not all gay and lesbian. They're coming down because they like the event. They like the feel of it. They like everything that's happening. And a lot of them are straight people, and they're appreciating us and appreciating our community. And mm -hmm. I believe that's a very strong political asset to, to maintain and guarantee our freedoms. So I, I personally don't have any problem with large corporate sponsors mm -hmm. so that because otherwise you can't afford that size of an event. Mm -hmm. it's, it's my opinion that we all owe a great debt of gratitude to the Queens of Stonewall. Mm -hmm. If they hadn't done what they did when they did and inspired all the rest of us and every one of us to do what we did when we mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. and no later I truly believe that the AIDS crisis would have been used to grind us into the dirt by our enemies. And they, would, they tried to, and they would have succeeded if we hadn't come as far as we did before mm -hmm. it arose. Mm -hmm. I believe that Stonewall was an expression of a much broader change uh, in, in, of the 60s revolution in, in social mores, sexual mores. Everything was changing in that generation. And I'm from that generation, and we were doing the changing because, you know, we were the spoiled kids that came out of, you know, the baby boomers, and, and most of us, you know, had, had, you know, came from good life, you know, good backgrounds and whatnot. We were the rebels, and we were being a rebellious um, um, generation, you know. And we certainly were helped along by some from older generations, like Timothy Leary and whatnot, but nevertheless, um, it, and being at the beginning of the, uh, of the, uh, the baby boomers, um, we were sort of taking the vanguard lead in it. And I do think, because of the timing, there was you know, a, a confluence of, of a massive uh, demographic going through society, a cohort, you know, the baby boomers, Changes, you know, rejection of of external forces like the Vietnam War, which was a catalyst, and other protests against establishmentarian events happening elsewhere in the country. Times, you know, it was it was something that was happening. Uh, I'm sure that the social circumstances at the time gave the Queens of Stone uh, of Stonewall an impetus to say, "Hey, no." Enough of this shit. We are not going to be uh, 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 be, be cowed by the cops this time around. We are going to stand, make a stand and take a stand. I'm happy that you know, the, the Queens of Cor uh, Stonewall did such an effective job of it, but I do think this was going to happen sooner or later. But it might have been too late uh, to it stop could have been the AIDS crisis yes. from being used mm -hmm. against us. The point, yeah, the, that's yeah. a good point because you know, this was in 1969, the AIDS crisis was in the early 80s. We had a decade. We had a lot of work to ourselves. do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and as I said earlier, and, um, I think you know, an awful lot of that we learned from organizing ourselves in the 70s certainly helped to uh, protect ourselves or defend ourselves from the powers that be when the crisis hit us. And we have to keep protecting ourselves. Yeah. We have to remember human yeah. rights are, are only there as long as we fight for them. Yeah. Whatever you you know, however you express this activism, Keep always keep vigilant. We have to keep vigilant. You know, we have the, all these rights now, and so on. But you know, they can be taken away. They can be diminished. They can be um, disregarded by the powers that be. And I sometimes think, you know, we see examples of it uh, even today. You know, with both in federal government legislation and in sometimes in provincially. But we've always got to be keep on guard for what we have. You know, and we've got an awful lot. And the best is yet to be, but, you know, we've got to keep it on guard.